Hey, as you probably noticed, there's so much fucked up shit going on in the world today. I mean, every single day, we can be upset about a different thing. There have been so many shootings, natural disasters because of climate change. There's a whole misinformation warfare going on online. There are Nazis in 2019, the ending of Game of Thrones. I mean, every day, there are pretty good reasons to be feeling depressed and powerless and just overall really shitty about the world that we are living in today so because i know i'm not the only one feeling that way i thought we used today's video as a productive way in which to deal with our feelings about all the fucked up shit that's going on because the first step to dealing with the problems that exist is dealing with our own feelings because before we can go and create action we have to clear our own head and our and our feelings and find some hope that we can change the world. So in today's video, I want to show you how to make protest art. In the past few years, more and more of everyday people are becoming engaged with the political process. And for me, one of my favorite parts about seeing this phenomenon grow online is seeing all the different like handmade signs that you see at protests or just people sharing in social media. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of give you some ideas on how to create your own in case that's something you want to do at home. What bothers me most about art is this idea that it's only for rich people and that it's meaningless, that it doesn't change the world. However, in a world in which the ruling class is more and more concerned with restricting the level of information that you have access to, I feel like art is a valid and one of the best vehicles for creating change and then absolutely a valid form of activism. For some reason, when we look at art and we see a part of ourselves or that's something that we believe in, there's something that happens inside of us that we feel better and we are able to feel connected to those around us if they share our ideas. And so I want to give you that so you can create that in your own unique spaces online, one-to-one -one with your friends or just in your own home if you want to make art for yourself. And as you guys already know, there is no wrong or right way to create protest art. It can be as simple as pen and crayons or as complicated as you want to get. These are just the ideas that work best for me um, with the things that I have around me, which as you guys know by now are acrylic paintings and mostly canvas and canvas paper. So let's just get started. Step number one is choosing your message. For me, it's a play on words on that quote from Animal Farm. All animals are created equal, but some animals are more equal than others. I feel like that's exactly what's going on with the children and the families at the border. And it's not only happening, of course, with Latinos, but it's also happening in the Black and Asian communities to different degrees. Right now, there are so many children of brown and black skin that think that anybody from the police or from the immigration can come and take them away and maybe even kill them. It's obviously totally wrong. It's fucked up. And so... Uh, th this whole situation is really fucked up and that's what really drew me to this quote from Animal Farm and I've changed it on my paper to say all children are equal but some children are more equal than others. So the second step is to write the letters on the canvas or the paper. I've personally had more success when I write out the quote or the words that I'm using onto the paper and then I go over them with paint. Be careful to, of course, erase any pencil that you didn't cover. And I found for me what this also allows me to do is to paint the rest of the surface of the paper while keeping that area free of paint, therefore flat for the most part, if unless, of course, you want to write over paint. Throughout my time in high school, I remember feeling really afraid that I would be deported for any reason. Like, I just knew in the back of my mind that that's a possibility because I'm not from this country. And so I always felt so I always felt a lot of pressure not to do anything wrong, of course, so that I wouldn't get in trouble. Eventually for me that feeling went away, especially when I became a permanent resident. And of course, eventually when I became old enough to be aware that because I look white, not a lot of police or immigration people are gonna target me. 
if they see me on the street, the way that they would target somebody with brown skin, of course. However, the other day I was getting ready to go to a concert and I actually stopped to make sure I took my green card with me because it's terrifying that actually today any of us can be taken into custody and can be questioned about our legal status. Um, it's even happened to a few citizens that have actually been U.S. citizens. So can you imagine how much stress young kids must have right now thinking that they're illegal or their parents are illegal? And for me, that's just not fair to put that kind of pressure on a kid. And that's what really bothers me about this whole thing. This targeting of immigrants right now, it's a form of terror. Now, in my opinion, this type of sign is very good for social media. Um, in social media, you can stop to really zoom in and read the entire sign in the way that this sign might not really work out on the street. Um, and if there's one thing that I could have changed looking back when I made this sign is that the message is not uplifting. And I always try my best to make the messages um, behind my art to be uplifting because like I said at the beginning of this video, we are all feeling so terrible. So that is the only thing that I don't like about this painting, that it's really a sad thought. But that's just really what I was feeling and what was going on through my mind. And so it's okay. It's okay to, that it wasn't uplifting. Just like I said, that's the one thing I feel like I could change going forward. Over the next few days, I kept looking at my sign and again, feeling like it could just be a little bit more empowering. And so the second sign, I made it with that intention. Number one, it's going to be a more empowering message. And number two, this is a sign that I want to be usable in an outside environment. Maybe at a, a rally. I was going to the Bernie Sanders rally. And, and like I did the last time he was in L.A., I wanted to have a sign that had a powerful message. So I decided to write pro-life at the border. Because number one, it pisses me off that people that are pro-life, you know, they they only seem to be pro-life if you're a fetus, have no problem using guns and killing people. So this is a little bit more of a controversial message. For me, it's a way to take over the meaning of pro-life. I think if you support life, you have to support life at all ages and not just when you're a fetus. And my biggest problem with the pro-life movement is they seem to really care about what you do with a fetus, but they don't seem to care with life, with killing people once you're no longer a fetus. And so um, for me, it's just a way to poke fun <laughs> at these pro-life people and, you know, make a statement about what's happening at the border all I want. Something I learned making this sign was that when you go outside, your words actually obviously need to be big so that people far away can read them. And what's funny is that a couple times I actually saw people who were really far away trying to read my sign. So that was a good foresight. But of course, I only learned it making the first sign, which was difficult to read unless you actually step very close to it. Or like I mentioned, you're using it in social media, which is a time when you can pause and read the entire message that's on the paper. Making this sign, I also learned to use a small angle brush for the letters, and especially capitals were a lot easier for me to write this time around. Um, you have to dedicate a lot more time and just be a lot more careful when you're writing cursive, when you're painting cursive, than when you're making big and thick capital letters. So that's actually a pretty good tip that I learned while making this. This, of course, this... This image is still very powerful online if you're using it in social media, but it's especially effective if you're out in public and people want to read what's going on in your sign. As you guys may have noticed, after I shot the video of this sign, I actually kept working on it for a little bit. And what I realized was just that it was a little bit difficult to read the words of the canvas as I had finished this. So what I did was add a little bit more white into the blue paint and I ended up with ended up with a different spectrum of light blues and dark blues and I actually like that effect a lot more 
and I feel like it's more readable than what, ha what I had previously made. Thank you guys for watching this video if you still are. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And most importantly, feel free to go out and create art for yourself, for your followers in social media, for your websites, for your local protest. I find that it's a great way to start a conversation with somebody that you don't know and it's a good way to spread awareness. I think it's very valid right now that we are fighting to tell the truth, especially with so many bots and uh, just trolls online. I think it's very valid to have a one-to-one -one conversation with the people around you. Even if you still think, even if you think it's somebody that you know, you actually never really fully know somebody and what's going on, on the inside. They could be wrestling with some of these ideas or some of these problems and talking to you might help them. So, Anyway, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.